Again, good morning to all of you and welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Father. Thank you. <laughs> I know it's a little wet outside, but we need the water, so that's good. Today, as we gather together, we find ourselves already at the second Sunday of Advent. And Advent for us is really the Lord inviting us to join him in his life inviting us to join in this adventure that we are called to with the Lord, to travel and journey with our God to his kingdom of light, love, and peace. Jesus came and took on human flesh so that he might walk among us and that he might give us an example of what, again, living the life of God really is all about, so that we might better be able, as John the Baptist did, to prepare the way of the Lord, to make straight his paths. For the call that was given to John the Baptist is a call given to each and every one of us, that we too have been called by our God to prepare his coming, his second coming, to prepare for his coming not only at that time, but also for his coming in our own hearts and in our own lives at our own death. How are we preparing for that coming? How are we continuing to open ourselves up to trusting in the Lord, to living again the, as good disciples and stewards of all that God has entrusted to us? St. Paul, in writing to the church in Philippi, reminds them that God has already begun the good work in you. He says, I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness, how long for you, I long for you, for you with the affection of Christ Jesus. Again, Paul expressing his deep love for that community of faith and reminding them that from the time of their baptism until the present day and into the future, that God is continuing to work in their lives, that God is continuing to be with them, to bring to completion the work that he has begun in them. Do we see again the call of the Lord to trust in the power of his spirit as we move forward in doing the work of the Lord each and every day in caring for the needs of our brothers and sisters in reaching out, as it says in the scriptures, with God's mercy and justice as Baruch ended the reading for today. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory with his mercy and justice for company. That is what we do. That is who we are. That is what we are about. Because as we sang in the responsorial psalm, the Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. But we are called to share that joy with others, not to hoard it to ourselves. It says, when the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. And Baruch reminds Jerusalem of the same thing. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery and put on the splendor of the glory of God forever, wrapped in the cloak of justice from God. Baruch experienced with Jeremiah, they experienced the Babylonian exile. And the people were in mourning. They were in shame. They had lost the battle. They had lost their beautiful city of Jerusalem. And here they are crying out to the Lord day and night. And again, Baruch is coming before them and saying, the Lord has not abandoned his people. He will bring us joy in the midst of our mourning. He will again bring us the glory of Jerusalem that he had promised. That again, what we had been dreaming will be fulfilled. The Lord again reminds us that he does the same for each and every one of us each and every day of our lives. By his dying and rising, Jesus' death on the cross has made all things possible. And that is what these beautiful words remind us of today. That with God, all things are possible. And we know that that is something that the Blessed Mother certainly is an example to us of each and every day. Again, reminding us here, for the God has commanded that every lofty mountain in Baruch be made low, and that the age-old depths and gorges be filled to level ground, 
that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forests and every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command, for God is leading Israel in joy. Again, beautiful and poetic words, which again also reflects what Isaiah has said. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding road shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. God will take away the obstacles that are in the life in our lives. Again, making the valleys filled in, making every mountain and hill low so that we can travel safely, that we can travel on straight roads, that we can make sure that it's not rough, as it says. God can do all things because of his love and his mercy as we share those gifts and as we open our hearts to the power of his spirit, we find again what is possible in Christ Jesus. When we look at the lives of the saints, we see very clearly that they undertook things that were very impossible to the naked eye. But it was amazing what they were able to accomplish. And especially if we look at St. Damien and St. Marianne, um, again arriving at Kalapapa, and seeing all the people suffering from Hansen's disease. I'm sure for Damien and for Marianne, that was an overwhelming sight. But nonetheless, they trusted that God would make their way straight, that God would lower the hills and the mountains and make sure that he fills in the valleys so that they might be able to again bring about his goodness and his graciousness to all the people who are truly in need in Kalapapa and Kalawa. The Lord calls us to do the same each and every day. So that is what we are called to do as his disciples and as his stewards. Hopefully during this wonderful Advent season, John the Baptist stands out as a wonderful character and a wonderful presence who again reminds us that we too, as disciples of the Lord, are called to prepare the way of the Lord so that all people might see the salvation of God.